Hello, it's Nicola from Daisy and Grace and I'm here today to help you on your way for the April Quilt As You Go challenge and I'm going to start with cutting. Firstly, I'm going to start with cutting wadding and a lot of you ask what I use in my Quilt As You Go um, templates and I use an 80-20 wadding which is 80% cotton and 20% polyester. Now I say wadding because I'm from the UK. If you're in the United States, you call it batting. So whenever I refer to wadding, you know I'm talking about batting. Um, so this is the sort of way, if you get anything loftier, your bindings don't turn very well on your templates. It just doesn't have the finesse of this low loft batting wadding. See, I've, I'm even at it myself now. So I'm going to just show you um, a few tricks when cutting this. So if you don't have a rotating cutting board, get yourself two boards. And now this is my base one, and this is um, a little one that I, I cut on. One side I always cut my wadding on, and that all the fibres get stuck in there. And occasionally I clean it with an eraser to get the fibres out. Or like now when I just scrub the surface and bits come off so we'll get rid of those and then the other side I use for fabric so that I never mix two up because this side does get very ratty so if you do have the two boards you can rotate this on your mat and that it just seems to work quite nicely so that's a nice tip get yourself um a little cutting mat on top of your big cutting mat and it and it really makes sense so i'm going to show you how i cut i'm going to start with the five inch square so i'm going to have two layers of wadding and i'm going to pop my square on that now because it's a bigger template you need to put pressure down i spider my fingers hold on to that template and a really great tip that um, Natalie from Missouri Star said was use a bigger blade cutting uh, rotary cutter. So this is a 60 mil blade and it just gives you a bit more depth when cutting wadding. So here we go. Always cut away from yourself. Move that bit. You see, I'm keeping my fingers on, on the template and I'm moving the board around so just swiveling that around once it's moved turn my fingers and the cutting away from myself this is really important never cut towards you oh just out of the screen there let's go like that and there my there i've got two five inch wadding pieces and i've got enough on this to do another two so i'll just quickly show you again so on, on the wadding, fingers down and cut. Now, if you're only happy cutting one at a time, you cut one at a time. If you feel you can cut more than two, have a go. If it's not for you, don't panic. Just do what makes sense to you. There we go. I've got five, uh, four or five inch squares cut. Now, I found with this um, roll of wadding, this is two and a half inches wide, and this works really well with the five by two and a half inch rectangle. So look how easy this makes it. How cool is that? One cut and you're done. I could just cut, cut away you get quite a lot on this roll but i can't i haven't worked out how many so bet please forgive me on that and again likewise with the two and a half inch square now if you make normal quilts when i say normal not quilts you go quilts you often have edges of your wadding left aside after a project you won't once you start quilting as you go you won't have any of those bits left because you'll start using them and they get used up pretty good. 
I've been I've been doing it for quite some time. I've got none of the I've got no edges left. So there we go. I'm cutting that. Now, if you're in the U United States, you've got great news because Missouri Star do a pre-cut wadding. So you could just go go on their website and buy all the pre-cut wadding. So next I'm going to talk about the fabric. So we're going to go on to cutting our fabrics. Um, so I've turned my little board over so you, you can see it gathers the fluff on the other side. So I'm turning my board over for my fabric side and I'm using these lovely Tula Pink fabrics. This is going to be the back of my uh, little quilt with that as the bindings coming towards the front and this lovely stag fabric I'm going to put in the centre. So when I'm cutting the backing I'm going to cut a few layers at a time so I'm going to see how many of my back template I can get across the fabric and I can get three across. So I'm going to fold the fabric into three so let's see if that just seeing if that will go in without too much waste there we go and then I'm going to fold that again on itself move that lovely stag fabric out of the way and pop that there so I'm going to pop my um, outer template on on the fabric but as you can see it's quite large this is a five inch square and I've only got little hands and it doesn't really work holding onto the template and if I went to cut that it would move and shift and we don't want that so the best thing to do is pop your inner back in to the template and then you can hold on to that and then the outside of the the uh, template doesn't move so that's all in position ready to go so I am going to cut away from myself again and try not to knock the camera which I have done I'm going to move that cut slide move I'm being lazy haven't moved my hands but I'm going to move them now last corner I think oh no I've got another edge hands on slide step last edge there we go we've got I've got three lovely bright backings cut ready I'm gonna pop them aside now I'm gonna take the stag fabric and I'm, this is for the inner section which is the five inch square here and you can use because this is clear you can fussy cut with this now the Missouri star templates come in this gorgeous yellow color but again look you can see through them that you can still fussy cut because a lot of people say oh but the Missouri star versions of your templates are yellow makes no difference but we can fussy cut um, bits of the fabric and because this has got this lovely stag head on it I think I want him or her I think it's a her, well yeah antlers I don't know anyway I want them in the middle of my square so I I've got um like a, oh, I don't know if you can see that there I guess you can see here I've got some cross marks on in the middle of the template so I'm going to use that to guide where I put the stag's head and you've got to remember that there's bindings that go around the outside so you've got to bear that in mind when you're fussy cutting an image that you are going to lose a section around the edge so my template's going onto the uh, selvage here but that won't matter because the bindings will come over and cover it you don't want that much of your selvage showing because the binding won't cover that and you'll get a little white line so do bear that in mind that you can 
use your selvage to the advantage of keeping that in the binding. Well, I think that looks, they look pretty cool in the middle there. So I am gonna go ahead and cut. Because this is a smaller template, look, I'm, I'm being naughty. I didn't swivel my board, but I am going to swivel it. And cut. And last one, all the way around. Cut that last bit off there. And look at that. He's they're right in the center of the, the template and I can put that lovely binding round it. Now you might you obviously you will have bits left over. I've got bits at the side here, and that the other templates can easily be cut in there. Oh and look at that. You can actually get the um, stag's head in the middle of that template too. And then look, you get some really pretty, really pretty bits with the two and a half as well. Haven't got quite as much there. But I can use those for um, some crumb quilting. Oh, and look at that. You get the flower right in the center there. Perfect. So you can have great fun fussy cutting your fabrics to make your little quilts really interesting but you don't have to if you've got an all-over print looks just as cool so this some top tips for cutting your fabric hello I'm Nicola from Daisy and Grace and I'm here today to give you some hints and tips on hand sewing your quilt as you go mini quilts um, and I'm going to demonstrate this on the five inch that I've already done a little cutting demo on. So I'm taking these lovely Tula Pink fabrics. I've got this as my backing, this is my main, and this is my wadding for the center. So what we need to do is, I've got my template here, I'm gonna take the middle out and put that aside. And I'm turning over my backing so that it's wrong sides up. And then I'm placing that template back on top. Now this is a trick with the Quilt As You Go templates. Because you have got that recess where the center piece of the template came out, that gives you the opportunity to put your wadding right in the center and your main fabric right in the center. And this is the magic because you've got your perfect bindings all the way around the outside. And that is the trick is using your your outer template to position your wadding and your main fabric inside. Now I've taken a couple of pins and I'm going to pin those three layers together. So I'm making sure that I've gone through all three layers. Then I can remove this outer template and put that aside. Now I am gonna hand show you how I, a couple of, a few methods of how to hand sew these um, mini quilts. So firstly, there's one way I do it is I, f you're going to fold your um, binding or backing fabric to meet the edge of your inner template. And then you're going to finger press that in place. Then you're gonna fold it again. And because I'm gonna hand sew it, I'm actually gonna take a few clips and pop those in place. The one way of sewing the squares is to actually go and fold the other edge like so. So the opposite to what you've done, do the same again, fold over your binding and pop some clips in again. So you're doing two edges and then you're gonna fold the top and the bottom. And if I'm hand sewing, I only normally do three sides and then do the fourth when I've sewn to that point. Now, I don't know if you can see, but this, this edge just overlaps this straight edge here. So what I'm gonna do is I just tuck that corner in and give it a little press with my finger so that when I turn it up again, 
it's nice and perfectly square and I'm going to pop a clip on there so let me bring this closer to the camera for you to see it perfectly meets the edge there I'm going to pop a clip in there one in the center and I'm going to do the same with this corner just pop that edge in roll over and again pop a clip in so for sewing this i'm going to use a contrast thread so that you can hopefully see my stitching um, if i was doing this normally i would match the thread to the color of the binding or the backing so in this case i'd choose that lovely lime green to stitch it and what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a knot in the end of my thread. So I grab the end of my thread and my needle, a couple of turns and pull the thread through and it creates a knot at the bottom. I might have to do that as a separate little video as a close up because I don't think you can really see what's going on there. And what I do, I take my needle and bring it through my wadding and my main fabric. But oops, drop my needle but not through the backing and then bring it up so I catch a small amount of the binding. Now if you're quilters this is the normal way you would bind a quilt. So you run your needle through the main fabric and the wadding and you bring it up on the very edge of that binding and you take go back into there and then bring it back up onto the binding and that's all you're going to do to hand stitch this edge like so and i was hoping you might get to see the stitches a bit more but you, you can't really see them let's see if i can bring this up towards the camera so that you can see the stitches So that is how I would sew and then when I get to the corner so I'm gonna do a bit of speed sewing here to get to that corner I shouldn't have chose the five inch square really it's the biggest one with the most amount of sewing but hey ho And the, the, I'll talk to you, about, while I'm getting to that corner, I'll talk to you about the Quill As You Go Challenge. The challenge is to make one of these little mini quilts every day. So you can see it's not that time consuming. When you're first, you're new to this, it does take a while. But as you get going, you'll get quicker and quicker. And, you know, about 15 minutes of your day, if you can... can Put that time aside to do a bit of quilting at the end of april you'll have 30 of these mini quilts so i'm getting to the corner and i put the needle up through both layers of the binding so the bottom layer and this top layer and then i'm going to go catch underneath and go to the center of this section of binding here so i'm going to go to the center there and then take it into the fabric and go to the end and then catch this corner and do another stitch and I just put my needle through that loop just to give it a little bit more security in that corner then I run my needle back through the wadding and the main fabric to get to that binding and then I start again like so so that is one way of doing it and then you'll have two two uh, bindings going top and bottom and two going inside another way of doing that so I'm going to just cut my thread is, and take another one bear with so I've got another backing, so 
take the same process again so lay my template on top of the backing with the wrong side facing that hole in the template gives you the perfect placement for the wadding and the main fabric take a couple of pins and pin it in place then you can remove the template so another way when I'm hand sewing is I just work on one cord one edge fold and that this is the the edge where I kept the, the selvage on and you can see it disappears once we've rolled the binding over so nobody knows there's a little selvage under there apart from you guys so I'm going to turn it and this time instead of doing either sides I'm going to just keep going round like so and again I'm going to fold that under and clip it and I was just going to go all the way round so that the bindings just go round in a circle. Now an another way that you can do the bindings I'm going to show you all of the alternatives is to fold both edges oh sorry no it's not ignore me so <laughs> I'm going to do it on the unfolded section here for you I'm going to do these two edges is to do a mitered corner and the first thing you want to do is fold that fabric over and finger press so that it meets the edge of that square and then you're going to pop the square on top so I normally pop a little p uh, clip in there and then I'm going to start on this side I'm going to fold my binding over to meet the edge the same same way as before but we've got that little mitre going on there in this corner I'm going to fold that over Put some clips. I'm going to take that one out now and pop that there. You can see it's got a mitre going on there. And then same as on this side. So fold that fabric to meet the inner fabric there. And then fold it over. And there you can see you get a mitre. I'll do a little close-up of, of the mitre for you and you can do this on all of the edges but I'm just going to show you what you need to do when you mitre this corner when you're hand stitching. So if you're hand stitching again I'm going to take my contrast thread so very dark thread but I still don't I don't think it works very well on this but I'm trying to, so that you can see so we take it and we're going to hand stitch that binding along here until we get to that mitered corner so I'm just taking little nibbles of that binding with my needle so very tiny stitches along there and that will secure the binding now i don't go th right through to the other side now there are some um, sewers out there that are so proficient and neat and tidy that they can sew little stitches on the other side but i'm afraid I don't have the patience to get the stitches all even and if I didn't get them all even it would drive me bonkers so I don't even try so when I put my needle in I'm going through the wadding the main fabric through the wadding and up through the main fabric but I'm not catching that back fabric at all and that should well that does secure the wadding in place so that you uh, don't worry you can still wash your mini quilts or your huge quilts when they're all joined there's enough security sewing through that wadding that it's all okay now i've got that mitre so i'm going to pop my needle in 
catch one side of the mitre at the corner and then I'm going to catch the other side and bring that through so I'm stitching both corners together and give that a little pull now we need to sew down this mitre otherwise the fabric will poke out so I do like um, a little ladder stitch or my version of a ladder stitch which I call the Matilda stitch so I'm just catching the fabric on either side and putting a little stitch across so when you do mitres even if you do them on the sewing machine if you're not going to say zigzag them you need to just go in and hand stitch the mitres to secure that fabric in place there we go and then I would just take run that back through the wadding and, and bring that up onto the edge there to carry on stitching along so there you go you've got a lovely mitered corner so that is two well a few hints and tips on hand sewing your little mini quilt hello i thought i'd give you a little mini tutorial on how i sew my um, quilt you go by sewing machine and i'm using the five inch square and i've pre-folded the bindings pinned it and gave it, given it a press so that i've got these nice crisp lines where i can sew um, and i'm gonna not mitre the corners on this so if I bring this up to the to the camera, you can see that my corners are just folded under there. There we go. I've just folded the corners up under. So I've not mitered these. So I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and pop that under there. And I'm using, I'm going to start, I'm going to take first, I'm going to take my pin out of my machine, um, out of my um, stitching. I'm starting away from the edge just because my machine sometimes grumbles when it's going over that thickness at the beginning. So I'm going to start sewing. Now you can see I'm sewing in a, a black thread. If I was doing this normally I would be matching the thread to that lovely lime green unless you wanted to do a decorative stitch in which case you would make get a thread that made a real nice statement now i'm getting to that corner and i'm very close to that pin i do not want to sew that pin so i'm going to just do one more stitch and then i'm going to pivot and stitch to that edge leave my pin in turn my stitch in turn my template and I'm going to stitch this edge, taking my pins out as you as I go. It's very expensive if you <laughs> sew over a pin accidentally. Trust me, I've done it. Not a good experience. And you're without a sewing machine for a while while it gets fixed. So I'm coming out to this edge. I'm just use, taking the pin out. Use the pin to guide that underneath turned it all the way around come back on myself a couple of stitches i'm going to do one more stitch i think i can get away with one more perfect and then i'm going to come down this way taking my pin out off we go see it's so easy now what i tend to do is when i'm sewing these by machine I tend to get quite a few ready, pinned and pressed. Oh, coming up to that pin again, I want to take that out. Catch it under, turn back on myself. And now I completely forgot what I was saying. But yeah, I get lots of these ready and then sit on the sewing machine and stitch a load at a time. Um, as many as my pins will allow, as many um pins that i've got i will do i'm just trying to get that thread out of the way 
and I'm coming down this edge and I'm gonna get to I'm gonna do one more stitch that's it turn and I'm just gonna come and finish off that edge there and then go back to the back tack and there we go look at that we've so we've come down gone gone down gone across to the oh come down here gone across to the side along gone all the way around and we've caught these corners here so you can see these corners so i've got this one made and i'm just going to just trim that thread and as you can see you want to match your thread because it is a little bit messy but hey ho and you can see it makes it the back quilted so you've got this line of quilting around it so i've got a couple here that i've made already and i thought i would show you how i do it on the sewing machine joining them with a zigzag stitch so let me just change over my machine to a zigzag stitch and let's go back to the sewing machine and put both my pieces underneath now if we go to this end you can see they don't match up perfectly but that doesn't matter because it's there's a bit of give in the fabric and you can just make them meet once you start sewing so the important thing is to start so that they they meet at the top there and you're not pushing them together closely they're just touching and you can put that under the sewing machine and let's start so this is my standard zigzag on my machine now as you can see i've got a gap between my pieces and that actually closes together as you sew and it means that they don't overlap and can you see i'm just making those two ends come together and meet so here you go now it looks messy because it's again it's in black thread along here and actually you would do that in a, a lime green or an invisible thread but look how easy it is to join and it's very sturdy so look how quick was that to a make one on the sewing machine and then to join them so it's it is a lovely project to do on the sewing machine gives you a totally different look than when you hand sew um, the little quilts you go quilts but just as good and if it's something for a for a baby or a child where it's going to get washed a lot it is perfect um, and plus once it's done in coordinating thre threads it looks amazing well i hope this has been a helpful little hints and tips video and i hope you're enjoying your quilt as you go experience and if you haven't started your quilt as you go experience why not it's so much fun see you soon bye